Well, hello and welcome in. Alyssa Orange here with Mike Irwin. It's another game day. Arkansas playing Missouri. Before we get into some specifics, Mike, Arkansas is four and five right now, and they're looking for a conference win. They're looking to get back to 500. How important is this game, especially against a team like Missouri, who's seven and uh, two and seven in conference? Yeah, it could really hurt them if they don't win it, and they, they do need to uh, win this game. Uh, Missouri is way down at the bottom. Yeah. They're, they're tied, I think, technically for uh, 11th, which Arkansas is ninth right now. But they're they're one from the bottom, tied with two other teams. They've only got two SEC wins so far this season. One of them was over Georgia, and that was a close game. And then, then they blew out Florida. That's been the one weird game that they've had at home this season because Florida's pretty good. But for the most part, they, they've struggled. Uh, Arkansas scoring 10 points a game yeah. more than these guys. You got to go all the way down there, leading score. Uh, Drew, Drew Smith is like, mm -hmm. where is he? He's like, way down the list in scores. He's, <laughs> right. he's like 31st in the SEC in scoring. Yeah. Arkansas has got three guys, one of them out, that score more points per game than he does. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Arkansas should win this game, but there are ways that Missouri could win it. Well, you know, I know a lot of you tuning in because we kind of teased you about Jimmy Witch status. The good news is we do have boots on the ground in Columbia. Our Tara Talmadge and Drew Ammon are there. And Tara texting me as we're talking that Jimmy Witt is on the court right now and that he's going through all the warm-ups. So that is very good news for Arkansas. Sure. The, the, one of the ways Arkansas could lose this game is not scoring. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're, you got to have a big game for Mason Jones with Isaiah Joe out. You don't ha you can't have another situation where Jimmy Witt doesn't score because that puts a lot of pressure on Mason Jones and, and Desi Sills and maybe the two forwards to score more points than they normally do. I don't think we can continue to uh, expect Mason Jones to score 30 to 40 points. So if he has a normal game, like 18 points, then who makes up the difference? Mm -hmm. So that, that's a way they could lose the game if, if other guys don't score and if Jimmy Witt is ineffective in this game, like he was the other night with this back issue, but uh, we'll just keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, we're going to hear from Eric Musselman now. Hopefully, if my work. Hey, what's up? Yeah, here with Kevin McPherson. Kevin, you know, you talk about last night, you talk about Mizzou Arena being packed for a concert. So Arkansas had to kind of adjust the schedule a little bit. Got in here for an 8 a.m. shoot around, and then that was something where the team came together and said, Hey, Muss, we want to shoot around. We want to get those shots up. And, and Muss was impressed by the way they came together and sent the message, hey, we want to get a little more warmed up in the morning prior to this 2.30 start. Well, and you know what? This is a coaching staff that has brought that NBA business atmosphere. And I think it's good that the players are buying in and want to want to make sure that they do the work to get ready for to prepare for a game. This is an Arkansas team that currently is tracking for an NCAA tournament at large bid. Every game's important in the SEC. You go on the road. There's nothing, you take nothing for granted. So get in here, get your shoot around, get familiarity with the uh, facility. And then when it's game time, you, you hope to be ready. I want to really focus in on Missouri because they've had some injuries. We talked about it last night. Obviously, you look at Jeremiah Tillman, this guy being back, but on a minutes restriction, he's a 6'10 guy. He's a junior. And then you look at Mark Smith, game time decision, really good guard from Mizzou. In fact, was injured last season, injured his ankle at Arkansas, and he's got a back injury right now. So right. you really got to factor that in when you look at this matchup between Arkansas and Mizzou. Yeah, and so for Arkansas coming in here hobbled in its own right, but Mark Smith last year it was a three-point shooting battle between he and Isaiah Joe. And at that point in the season, they were the two leaders in the SEC. Of course, Smith goes down injured. Arkansas ends up winning that game. Uh, but if, that's a big part. He's their second leading scorer, averaging around 11 points a game. But the three ball. Arkansas's perimeter defense has been the best in the country when you talk about field goal defense from three. But with a shooter like that, that's one more guy that you've got to account for. And that changes things. We've seen it with Isaiah Joe on the flip side, how he changes things defensively for other teams, because now it opens up opportunities for guys like Mason Jones and Jimmy Witt. Now, we know Joe's not in this game, but Mark Smith can add that same value for Missouri. Somebody from Van Buren, Arkansas, Mitchell Smith, nearly had a double-double against Texas A&M. And when they go big or small, this guy very versatile in the post for the Mizzou Tigers. Yeah, Mitchell, I got to cover him when he was playing grassroots basketball, playing in Arkansas. He's a guy that can stretch the floor a little bit too for a big guy. You know, he can step out and knock down a shot. Uh, he's a versatile. He's got, he's a lean 6'9", uh, but a guy, that, again, that presents some problems. You know, he's averaging a little over 20 minutes a game, but a veteran player. Uh, Missouri's, you know, 2-7 in league play, 10-12. and 12. 
They had, have had the injury problems. We've talked about Tillman coming back. This is a team that's also upset an Illinois team that's now ranked yeah. 20th. They've beaten Florida soundly on this floor. And just recently they, on this floor, they came back from a 20-point deficit to overcome Georgia for a win. So it's a team that can rise up and strike you. I know you've written about it, but let's get your on-camera reaction to Jimmy Witt returning to his hometown because I was on this floor back in 2016, and he saw Jimmy Witt get 15 points in that game and 20 minutes of action. He was 7 of 11 shooting. He was a freshman then, had the three-year spent at SMU. He's back at Arkansas. It's this homecoming and a chance to take down Mizzou today. Coming off a scoreless performance against Auburn. Well, lower back pain, and we'll see how he how he fits in today. If he's able to go, and if he does, is he a guy that's out there as a decoy because Arkansas is low on bodies, or can he is he full go? But he's a guy that the last time he played here with the Arkansas Razorbacks was a freshman, as you mentioned. He's he's added strength, and he's added a lot more to his game, and he's a guy that Arkansas's second leading rebounder. That's not talked about a lot, but so versatile in that mid range. It's very hard for teams to prepare for that because there's no way that you can emulate that in practice, a guy that does what he does in an offense. He doesn't take threes. That's so rare, but he's so efficient. One of the field goal leaders in the SEC because he gets it around the basket. Yeah, I love his old school approach. All right, Kevin McPherson, thanks very much. Arkansas looking to get to 5-5 five and five in conference play here today at Mizzou Arena. Back to you. Thanks a lot, guys. That, of course, was our Kevin McPherson and our Drew Ammon. Not Musselman. We'll get to him in just a minute. But you heard there as they talk about Jimmy Witten. And if you're just joining us, he's warming up. He's going through warm-ups and stretches with his team. So that's the good news here. You know what's interesting? And they talk about his return to Columbia. Some guys go back home and they don't play well. And then other guys come back home, like we've seen with Kayvon Allen every time he stepped into Bud Walton Arena, and play really, really well. I feel like Jimmy Witt's a guy who can go back home and play really well. Yeah, coming off that game the other night, if he's healthy, I think he'll do all right. The question is, how much does that back problem affect him? Uh, I think we were looking at some of our people up there were looking at him yesterday, and he was kind of stooped over as he walked by. So we'll see how that works out. But again, you don't want him shut out. You obviously don't want him not able to play at all. Because again, what that does is put pressure on other people to score more points. And there's not a lot of bodies there to score points. So if somebody has an off game like a Mason Jones, then that's how you can lose the game. We're going to talk about Mason Jones and a guy you think will step up today in just a little bit. But now let's get to Eric Musselman. It's, uh, you know, everybody talks about take one game at a time or whatever. But, you know, like there's only one thing we can control right now. You know, and it's it's how do we, you know, come out and play against uh, Missouri. I mean, that's that's kind of all we can control. And our guys have done a, a, an incredibly great job of of not having hangover losses where, you know, we lose and then it carries over to the next game and we lack energy, um, you know. So, and, I, you know, I expect our team to come out and play with – you know, even though it's an early start, it's one of the, you know, we haven't had a lot of early starts this year, but it's a, you know, it's a game on the road with an early start. And I will tell you, like, you know, our shoot around time is at 8 a.m. Um, at Missouri. We cannot shoot in their building tomorrow night, which normally we do because there's a concert there. Uh, yesterday, I was texting with the guys and, you know, said we might let them sleep in on Saturday and we, you know, we're not going to be able to shoot. Uh, Friday night, which we normally do, probably won't have a shoot around because I don't want to get them up at 7:30 for an eight o'clock shoot around. And got a phone call, and some of the guys said, "Hey, you know, let's discuss having a shoot around, or let's figure out what we can do if we can't get in the gym." That's the type of guys like 99.9% .9 of the teams. If you told them that you had an eight o'clock shoot around slot. And you're going to let them sleep in. They would probably say, "Okay, great." They wouldn't, you know. But but I actually got a phone call yesterday, and it was from Mason, and said, "Hey, coach, can we can we talk about, you know, that?" Is that surprising, Mike? I am not surprised at all that it was Mason Jones who ends up calling coach and saying, "I don't know about this sleeping in kind of stuff." Very weird uh, situation there that he was talking about. Is yeah, they had a Luke Combs concert last night in Mizzou right. Arena, so there was no shoot around for Arkansas. Very unusual. But what does it say about guys like Mason Jones, guys who are on this team that wanted to get up early, not hit the snooze button, and get some shots in? Well, Razorback fans are kind of, this is kind of, he's kind of slowly built up this year. Yeah. I think a lot of fans are late realizing what a great year he's having with those 30-point games, a 40-point game. 
But again, what I was struck by, and I'll always remember this, there are things that I remember for years, and this is one of those things I'll remember for a long, long time, and that is after they lost that game to Auburn, and he had played 44 minutes and 35 seconds of a 45-minute game. That means he was on the bench for, what, 25 seconds the whole yeah. time? He was exhausted. If people want to know why he missed those free throws late, it was because he was tired. Mm -hmm. He played virtually the whole game, and he'd scored 40 points. And he came in the press room and blamed himself for the loss. Mm -hmm. said, if I had made those free throws, we would have won. And I, I lost it a little bit with some of the fans on Twitter that night that were ripping this team and saying, well, we kind of got our hopes up, but now they're back to what we thought they'd be. And I'm thinking, you know, most Razorback fans, yes, you want to win, you want to have a great season, whatever. But most fans I've been around over the years also respond to the character of a team. This team may not, they're not going to win the SEC. I don't know what their NCAA status will be, you know, three or four weeks from now, whether it goes up or down. But what I know is this team has incredible character. Mason Jones has incredible character. For a guy to do what he did mm -hmm. and go in there and accept blame for the loss, nobody thought yeah. it would, would do that. He said, it was my fault. Then he said, my stats don't mean anything because we lost. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. Yeah, well, uh, as we talk about Mason Jones switching over to a guy like Reggie Chaney, you know, Mason could easily have, by the way, uh, easily have another 30-plus point uh, performance tonight against Missouri but he can't carry this team that's and right. that's what we learned against Auburn just because Mason Jones goes 40 doesn't automatically that's going to be a win for Arkansas so what does Reggie Chaney need to do well thankfully he's been playing a lot better mm -hmm. we've seen him do some things lately that are just eye-popping I he can shred he can go right through the middle of the defense he's got quick he's quick enough that if you sleep on him he can blow past two or three guys and get a dunk uh, he's, not, he's not huge. I mean, he's around 6'7", six, 6'8", six, but he's gotten better at timing his jump mm -hmm. so he doesn't get his shot blocked. He's getting fouled more often, so and he's rebounding a lot better. So he needs to go in there and battle, but they need Adriel Bailey to do that too. This is not a big Missouri rebounding team. Mm -hmm. They're like 13th, I think, and Arkansas is 14th. There's a difference of one rebound a game. So this is not a game where you expect them to really struggle with rebounding or the other team gets a lot of second chance points. Again, there's one other way Missouri could win this game, and I haven't mentioned it. They, they, are, a, they are number two in the SEC in free throw shooting, 77%. That's good as a team. Here's the problem they've got. Arkansas is down there at 73%, but they've, shot, they've made more free throws because mm -hmm. they've shot more yeah. because Missouri doesn't tend to draw a lot of fouls. So every time you look at something Missouri does well, you say there's a counter to that. Yeah, Missouri, you got to put it into perspective. Missouri's one of the better teams at turning yeah. people over. But Arkansas's mm -hmm. the best. Mm -hmm. So whatever they do well, Arkansas seems to do it a little better. Yeah. And that makes me feel good. The only thing I'm worried about is Jimmy Witt. I think yeah. he needs to be a factor in this game. Absolutely. Well, I think it's going to be a fun one. Again, Arkansas trying to get back to 500 in SEC play. Currently 4-5, and five, playing a 2-7 and seven Missouri team. Arkansas on the road. Mizzou Arena, game time 2.30 on the SEC Network tonight. For Mike Irwin, I'm Melissa Orange. For our Kevin McPherson and our Drew Ammon and Tara Talmadge in Columbia, thanks for watching, and we'll see you after the game. For watching this Pigtail Nation report.